give God a clap of praise for the life of our pastor, Pastor Bob. Hallelujah. Woo, you can be seated. Happy Easter to all of you. Happy Resurrection Day to all of you. Thank you. We're going to have a great time. I'm going to acknowledge our newcomer. If you brought some visitor or a newcomer in the house, uh, I, I salute you. You're, you're rocking the place. So if you're a newcomer, would you just shoot your hand to the air right now? Any newcomer, we want to welcome you, boy. Hey, we want to welcome the house. Thank you, thank you, anybody. Hey, you're going to have a great time. Oh, we're going to have a lot of great time today. So let's just bow our heads and pray. God, we just thank you for your word. I pray, Father God, I'll speak the word out of, of, of the Holy Spirit. Not about my own word, but, but God, but from, from you, God. I just speak the presence of God just manifests in this place. It's not by enticing word, but by the power of God that will change the people's life. No, we just thank you, Father God. I speak open heaven right now. Holy Spirit, would you saturate? I pray what Caitlin prayed this morning, that we will know about God and the Holy Spirit. And I just pray that we will pray that today, Lord God, that we will know about the work of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we just thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Happy Easter. So Easter has been celebrated. It's the most uh, wonderful event of the year that people are, churches are packed. And I'm glad you guys came. And I believe it's Easter and Christmas. It's always the church is packed. So thank you for coming. Some facts about Easter. Facts about Easter. We have 90 million chocolate Easter bunnies are made for e Easter each year. How much? 90 million of chocolate bunnies. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of chocolate. 90 million, okay? Each day, 5 million marshmallow chicks and bunnies are produced in preparation of Easter. Who loves chocolate here? Oh, this is your day. Do you know that there are 16 billion jelly beans? 16 billion jelly beans are made for Easter. Oh my God, just a lot. Of, who loves jelly beans in the house? We're going to have, we pray that this today, there's no diabetes for this week. Okay, I bind diabetes. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. I pray when we ate those, there's no diabetes. Okay, that's baloney, isn't it? Just, but we can pray about that. Okay, let's go. 82% of Americans say they would prefer a chocolate or candy bunny for Easter. So 82%, do you like chocolate? Yeah, so 82%, you, you're part of the 82% do likes that. Only 4% say they would prefer a live rabbit. You're gonna eat the live rabbit? I don't know what. He said here, only 4% they say would prefer a live rabbit. I don't, I don't know, okay. Let's go further. 63% of Americans would most likely to receive a chocolate bunny on Easter morning. Okay? And then, do you know the most favorite among jelly beans is the red jelly beans? The kids' favorite is the red. Um, what else? You know, Easter is, a, actually Easter is a pagan um, celebration before, but we redeem it. We redeemed like Christmas. It was a it was a pagan uh, celebration, but we redeem it from the devil. So Christmas is for God now. Easter is for God. Amen. So Easter uh, is a uh, 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 before, but now it's holy before God. Easter is just saying that it's about mu multiplication, about fruitfulness. Um, I believe if you're a Christian, you should be fruitful. Amen. You'll be prosperous. Okay, so we're going to talk about Easter today, um, but before that, we, before we continue on Easter, we're going to talk about a story. You know, I, I said, I'm, I'm battling for several weeks, am I going to talk, talk about the story, or I'm going to be talking, because I told the story last Sunday, uh, last, last year about the story of Easter, and I love the story, and I've been praying this week, I got, God, do you want me to share the story? 
but I have a message after the story. So we, can, is that okay to read the story of Easter or the, the resurrection day? Is that okay with you guys? It's a long uh, verses, but it's okay. It's, you know, it's, we're going to have a great time. So let's talk about the story of the resurrection. Okay? So early on Sunday morning, Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone has been rolled away. Yeah. Woo -hoo! And found the snow, okay, uh, from the entrance. Verse 2, help me out. She. Okay, let's just hold on for that. Okay, so it's early Sunday morning. Jesus was, uh, Jesus died on Friday, and Saturday is uh, the black, they call it Black Saturday because there's, they said there's no, uh, Jesus died. Okay, and then Sunday, early on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, okay, and her purpose is to seek on Jesus to pay a, an honor, bought some, a lot of incense, uh, to, uh, a perfume in order to uh, make a, a burial, a great burial for Jesus Christ. So that's her intention, okay? Now, as she walks in that place, there's a big stone. It said, according to history, it takes 20 people to roll out that stone. But what she found out, there's the, roll, the, the stone was rolled out, okay? So she just, whoa, what happened? They took Jesus. So what she did, she ran, okay? She ran. So, you know, I'm glad those people are very fit at that time. If you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, you need to be fit. You need to be running. Anybody a uh, runner in the house? Yeah, so you are biblical. So, so... Mary Magdalene ran and found Simon Peter, okay? So he, she ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple. I'm so, it's funny because they said, the one whom Jesus loved. That's John. Remember, this is about in John chapter 20. The, the author of this one is John. So he's just saying, I am the favorite. <laughs> Simply saying, I am the, I'm the one. You know, I... He knows his position. Let me ask you this morning, do you know your position in Christ? That you're God's favorite. That God loves you so much. Amen? So, okay. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So somebody, someone stole the body. Yeah, some, someone. Okay? I don't know where to put it. Where did they found? Uh, they, they placed the, Jesus. Chapter 3, uh, verse 3 said, come on. Peter and other disciples started out for a tomb. Okay? They were both running again. They're very athletic. So they ran again. Of course, they got excited because, you know, it, uh, they're thinking about somebody sold the body. Okay? But the other disciple outran Peter, who is John. So John is really fit than, than Peter. Okay, so he outran, uh, outran Peter and reached the tomb first. So John came running and go to the tomb first. So what happened, he stooped and looked into the, and saw the linen wrapping lying there. So what he did, he ran and then stooped and looked around and see, and he found out that the wrapping it still it was there. Okay? Okay, where are we? Now. Verse 6 said, then Simon Peter arrived, <sighs> now, <sighs> came, and went inside. See, I like about Peter. Yes, he's slow, but he's, just, he's, he's the one who went inside. Exactly, isn't it? He went inside. Very impulsive Peter. I want to see. I want to see him. I want to see him. I want to see this, this one. So he went inside, okay? He also noticed the linen wrapping lying there while the cloth has been covered, Jesus' head was folded up. Oh my goodness. When I'm reading this one, I said, Jesus, why do you still need to fold those linen? 
You are so organized, type A personality. I am a type B. I don't, you know, all my underwear, they're, they're there. Or socks, all socks, everything about my garments is all there. You know, uh, so I'm, my, in, my, in my wife's place, they're all fit well, you know. You, in mine, all oh, there. Anybody here very, uh, uh, very like Jesus, very uh, meticulous, know how to fold the, uh, your, your shirt well? Oh, there's a lot of people. Or just like Pastor Bob. Oh, yeah, you're normal. You're normal, bro. Okay. Okay, let's go back. And while the cloth has been covered, Jesus said, oh, folded, and the other with the wrapping. So they, it was folded. Next is, then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. So now John went inside because Peter, hey, I saw them. I saw the, the, the wrappings. Come inside. So he did when and he believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scripture that, uh, that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Because when Jesus left, he's been telling them before he left, he said, hey, I'm going to go rose after three days oh they don't you know they don't really sink in on that word finally then they went home see man nothing really particular they just went home i just you know they just went home i think men are like that isn't it but about woman let's talk about the woman mary was standing outside the tomb making a drama Your drama can make a miracle, actually. I love you guys. And I love the girls too. But anyway, Mary was standing outside the tomb crying. And as she, as she wept, she stoo, stooped and looked in. So this is what happened. The boys went out. The girls stay. And she's crying and crying. And what she did, she stooped and looked inside. There's some meaning here. There's something about Mary that choose looking for someone or something. And the, the, the miracle that happened with her is that she choose to stay. You want to make a miracle in your, in your life? Choose to stay where you are right now. Let God do the mighty works. Just stay, okay? Now, let's go further. Verse 12, she saw two white robe angels. Now she looked inside, and what, what happened? In her drama, two angels showed up. Sometimes in your, in, your, in, in your situation, the angels will come. Your rescue, the thing for your rescue is there. I don't know what you're here, situation, you probably hear a lot of need. But God is telling you that He is there to provide an answer on your situation. You choose a lot of route. You try a lot of direction. But God is saying this morning, I am the answer. I can provide the answer for your problem. Come to Him. Stay a little longer. Stay a little longer. Ma Mary, stay a little longer. This is what happened, okay? So there's two angels came. They saw two white robe angels, one sitting at the head and the other one at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. I want to see angels in my life. Do you want to see angels? Yeah, I want to see angels. I, I, I want to see the supernatural. Mary saw it. What a privilege. What a privilege. That only that is getting better and better. That only she saw angels. The next one is powerful. Verse 13. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angel asks her. An angel is talking to you. Do you want an angel to come to you and talk to you? Yeah, I want that. The angel asks her because they have, and the angel asks her, then because they have taken away my Lord. She said, having the drama of loss. They taken Jesus. She replied, and I don't know where they have put him. 
And she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. Woo! Come on, Joanna. And, and then she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was the resurrected Jesus. She was so blessed that she's the only person that was seen Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, Mary Magdalene. Do you know that God can use a woman? This, this, prayer, this Sunday is not about woman, okay? I'm just, I, but I just want to encourage you. You have a big thing for the kingdom of God. Don't ask, underestimate what you can, can do for God. Okay, dear woman, verse 15, why are you crying? See, Jesus knows everything, but see, I didn't know about the Lord. He always loved to ask questions. You know, you ask him a question, he asks you a question. Throughout the world, you know, he, he loves to do that. Because when you ask questions, you really want to focus what you really want. Isn't it? So I said here, dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her, who are you looking for? Of course, he, she's looking for you. But, you know, she's, he kept on asking, okay? She thought he was the gardener. <laughs> Funny. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. I guess she's very fit that she can carry the body of Jesus. But you know what really moved me here? She wanted to have Jesus. In spite of all these things, she's looking for Jesus. Jesus was dead. And yet, she's still looking for Jesus. Maybe you're here, everything's dead in your life. Everything, everything you see, future, family, career, no money, it's all dead. But the answer is Jesus. Keep on looking, keep on searching. The Bible says, when you seek him, he will be found. God will not uphold any good things to those who diligently seek him. When you seek him in a seeking mode, then, when, then God can do greater things in your life. Amen? Next, Mary. This is what Jesus said. Mary. It's so good to call when, when Jesus called your name. Bobby. When God calls your name. When... When she was called Mary, Jesus said, she turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to the, my Father and your Father to my God and your God. He has, a, he has a conversation to resurrect Jesus. And things happen. And, and, and this is what happened. And, he, and God said, go find my brothers and tell them I'm ascending to my father and to your father, to my God and your God. Just tell the truth. That's why God chose woman because naturally they talk. You said it there, it's all over there, all over the world. That's why God is so smart. Jesus is so smart. The two boys left. Oh, yeah, nice. Okay, bye. But this drama, drama, drama queen. So, but God did something great. And what happened is, do you know that woman, this first evangelist in the Bible, is a woman named Mary Magdalene? The first one who foretell about the good things about the resurrected life of Jesus. Amen? Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them i have seen the lord then she gave them the message that's the story now let's go to my main topic i just want to tell you the story do you love the story yeah it's a real story do you know the resurrection is that it's um historically correct and also they found that the facts are congruent 
and they all scientifically, they found out it's true. So some of you may be here, I don't know if I believe that the resurrection, but you just Google it, find it, it is really true, it's going to come out. Uh, they found out that, I can tell you more about the resurre facts about resurrection, uh, like the silk tomb was open and empty, that's number one. The Roman guards admitted that angels came and rolled away the tomb, so they, they, they wrote that historically. And then the official in town paid off the soldier for their silence. So there, there's a, ri a lot of things. Uh, the burial clothes were still in the, in the wrap style around the body, but nobody inside anymore. Also, according to them, they found out the, the wrappings of Jesus. According to one of the I'm um, reading, they found the, the wrapping of Jesus. And some of them are claiming that the wrapping of Jesus, but they checked it. And they said it's only, oh, this is only uh, tw uh, uh, two centuries, so you cannot have this. But they found one that is really dated on that exact time for many, many years, how many, 2,000 years, more than 2,000 years ago, that that's exact wrappings and the, the wrappings is the the amount of the blood and all those uh uh the way it was wrapped is congruent to the uh, the, the, the way the bible saying about the wounds of jesus so there's a lot of historically and scientifically they also in 1885 i believe that the two where jesus was placed it uh they check for any human um remains if it really there's a, a there's nothing there they cannot find any fiber because really Jesus was risen from the dead. So there's a lot of things that the Bible is saying that the resurrection is real. So to this morning, this morning I'm going to speak about the power of resurrection. Come on, I'm going to speak about the power of resurrection. You know, the Bible says, our text here in Philippians 3.10 said, that I may know him. This is Paul saying, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Okay, let's talk about this verse. One verse. He said here, that I may know him. You know, for us, knowing it just, it's become so natural, casual. I want to know, like, you know your president, he has a wife, has uh, two kids, you know. But in Jewish culture, when you say the word no, the word no is powerful. It's really coming to the details of who you are. It's just like, us is just acquaintance of knowing. But in Jewish, when they say the word knowing, it means it, there's a, an, a, uh, an experience. There's a deep details of no, knowing the details. Imagine, you know, I can, uh, some, some of you know me, but the one who really knows me, this beautiful wife. She knows when I wink like this, it means I need to wash the dishes. <laughs> Isn't it? I'm just kidding. So, the one, because, you can sit, babe. The thing is like, the thing is like, the one who knows because there's, we've been together for a long time. In Jewish culture, what Paul is saying is that, that I may know him, progressively knowing him. Not knowing, I just know him once a year. Or I'm just going to know him whenever I feel like it. But the Bible says progressively, coming continuously. Just like when you have a husband and wife, you know, you've been married for 20 years, but like I've been married for... 18 years, thank you, babe. 18 years, I'm still knowing her, and she's still knowing me. And, and everybody changed, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Next topic. <laughs> because I love my wife. Okay, now, the word know is so powerful that Paul has a purpose that to know Jesus. Anybody here want to know Jesus? That you are not satisfied on your situation. You, you, you know, knowing is like halo halo. What's halo halo, Pastor Bob? Can you, for, the, for our people not Filipino here, I want to talk to you about halo halo. Anybody know halo halo? Mix mix in, in English. It means it's our dessert here. It is like that. It's, a, ooh, it's so powerful. It's, it's yummy. 
No, the word no, I just correlate as a halo halo. What's halo halo? It's a dessert, it's a shaved ice wherein uh, there's a lot of fruits on the bottom. A lot of beans, uh, jello, and just a lot of yummy stuff. Fruit cups, it's a lot of, it's yummy. So the more you eat halo halo, the more you go deeper and deeper, the more it's getting better and better and better. The same thing with Jesus Christ. The more you want to know Him, it's getting better, yummy, yummy, mm, delicioso. <gasps> Ooh, I want to know more about Jesus. Isn't it? He is just so good. He is a God that is wanting to be known. And I want to know Him. I've been a Christian for 13 years. I'm 43 now. How many years now? 30 years? I know Jesus Christ. I accepted when I was 13. I said, I surrendered my life when I was 13. God, I want to give my life to you. And from 30 years until now, it's just like I'm just new. I just, I want to know him more. It's getting better and better. Isn't it, Queen? It's getting more. It's so yummy. You know, there, there's like a, uh, in, in the Mexican, we have this uh, chamoyada. But there's something like a piña here. And then there's a lot of loca loca. What was that? <laughs> and there's a lot of gummy bears and all this raspa and all this and when you eat it's just it goes to your bones i think you, you it's just like you don't know if it's really sweet or sour or sweet or whatever or just it makes you crazy oh I mean, what is it it's it, it's good and then the chili it's, it's hot and but it's good it's 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 cold it's hot i don't care it's it's fruit and then gummy bear and then and then there's bacon what was Hispanic people, you're crazy people like us. Amen? I think that's... And the same thing with God. The more you want to know Him, the more you want to experience it, it's getting better and better. I encourage you, I want to encourage you that your purpose is to know Him. Don't stop knowing Him. You think you know Him? Duh. Not yet. To know Him, Okay. Like a halo halo, okay? Is that there? No, from the word, from a Greek word, ginosko, okay? Which means to understand, to perceive, and to experientially learn. Experientially, you experience learning about Jesus. I don't want to know God in the Bible alone, on the logos. I want to experience God. I don't want to come to church just to have understanding. I want to experience church. I want to experience the presence of God. I want a real church. I want to just come there and nothing happened to me. No, I don't want a kind of church with that. I want to, when I come to church, something is changing in my life. And it changed my situation. It changed my destiny. It changed my workplace. It changed everything because we are dealing with God. Oh, my. Who want to be changed by God here? I want to tell you this morning, you cannot change yourself. Your husband can, cannot change you. You cannot change your husband. We, we cannot change our children. We cannot change our boss. But God can change your heart. He loves to transform life. He loves to transform. That's why you come to him. Come near like Mary. Stay a little longer. Don't go back until you get your miracle. Stay there. Stay. If you need to drama, make a drama in the presence of God. Worship Him. Cry out. And God will rescue you. He's going to send you angel. Not only angel, He's going to send Himself to you. A package still. Woo! Are you excited this morning, church? He's alive. God is alive. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Understand, perceive, experientially learn. In I love amplified version. This is a, what do I like? It's message. Message kind of a little wacky at sometimes. The translation. You go to King James or uh, King James or New King James, the real uh, one, and then you get a lot of uh, uh, translation. But this one is in Philippians Street. Then in the amplified, I love it. It said here. Paul said. For my determined purpose is, my determined purpose is that I may know Him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with Him. 
knowing in the Bible, in the Jewish, is intimacy. It's being together. Paul decided, I may know Jesus intimately. Let me ask you this morning, how intimate you are with the Lord Jesus Christ. God is inviting you right now to be intimate with him. I want to know him more. My prayer, it's just like what his prayer, that I might know him. For 30 years, I've known you, but I want to know you more. Anybody want to pray with me with that? That God, that's my prayer, that my family will know you. My generation will know you. Amen? Now, I said here that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person. <laughs> he is not a boring God. He is not a boring Jesus. He's better than drugs. He's better than sex. He's better than uh, whatever. He is. He said, wonders. Do you know that he's a God of wonders? Better than to have. Sometimes people are going to girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend to have wonders. Be one, have God to wonder you. Have God, have the, the spaces you're looking for is not man or woman. Because when you find that person, if you don't have God, you're going to be bankrupt again. Why don't you just have full of God and when, when you're full of God, God will give you the right person. But if you're empty, oh, empty, and then the other one is empty, my goodness, they're all negative then. Walking on planet Earth, all negative. Let's have just Jesus. Amen. That makes sense, church? Okay. Where are we? Perceiving and recognizing, understanding the wonder of this person more strongly and more clearly. Okay? This is, in, the, uh, in the, uh, the verse we read, it's that I may know him. This is what the Amplified saying. <laughs> now, second is that, that I may, in the same way, plus what you said, in the same way, to come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection. There's so much power in the resurrection life that we need to know. So what, that Jesus rose from the dead, you might ask. So what? So what, okay? There's so much outflowing from his resurrection, which is exert over believers. I pray this morning that you have a mega dose of hope that your understanding about res resurrection will change your destiny. And that I may so share his suffering to be continually transformed in the spirit, into the likeness, and to his death in the hope. So let me go back to this one. That I may know him. So for, so there's three, uh, maybe, section here. That I may know him, that I may know the power of his resurrection, and that I may share his suffering, becoming like him to his death. There's three, three parts, okay, here in this verse. That I may know Christ first, and then I may know the power of resurrection, and then able to share with suffering that what happened to us is we always go back to the suffering we don't have the experience of knowing him as a person knowing him who is in your life he is your friend he is your lover everything you want he is and he continues revealing himself but some of us we stop there we don't progress on the next step the next step it was knowing the power of his resurrection Today, we will learn that. What's the power of resurrection? What's the result of resurrection? And then after that, you know about him. You know about the power of resurrection. It's so easy to suffer with him. The problem is so, we're suffering. We don't have any car, uh, car, gasoline. We suffer, and then we, oh, I don't care about the church anymore. We suffer because we don't really found the knowing of him and the power of resurrection. But we translate already here. Oh, nobody... Somebody took my chair in the church. <laughs> my goodness. Suffering. Can you suffer a little bit for Jesus? If you're, really, if you're really a follower of Jesus, a believer, you'll be persecuted. When you are persecuted, it means you are a follower of Jesus. Now, let me tell you, 
when you, it's easy to say the suffering if you have experienced the, the person of, the, of Jesus and the power of resurrection. So let's talk about the resurrection. God is a God of power. Do you believe that? God is a God of power. He is, he is what? Omnipotent God. It means powerful God. Amen? Who agreed that God said uh, He's a powerful God? Who believed that? Come on. Do you believe that God is powerful? Come on. What? He can do miracles. He's a God of possibility. So to man, it's impossible. To God, it's possible. Amen? So let's talk about this. What's the result? Result of Christ's resurrection. Are you ready for this? Church, are you ready for this? Come on, are you ready for this? Come on now. So what? What's the result? I want to know the result of resurrection. I want to know it. What's it for me? What's it for me? Now that I know that Jesus raised from the dead, what's it for me? This is it. Knowing the power of his resurrection, break loose the chain of sins. Come on, church. Knowing, having an intimate relationship with the power of God breaks loose chains of sins. The problem is that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm addicted with porno and all these things, all, all, all of this. I cannot break out of this. You know what? Have the revelation of the resurrected power of Jesus. It's going to take care of that. The problem, we don't have a revelation how powerful God is. But you know, he came. The Bible said, he be not risen from the dead. Our faith is futile. And you will be living in sin. But it doesn't stop there. In the three days, he resurrected. And when he's resurrected, that nature of sin, he took it. So I'm going to tell you this morning that you're, if you have Jesus, for real Jesus, okay? Not like, oh, Jesus. No. Intimate knowing Jesus. That you say and you say that I have Jesus in my heart then you have the resurrected power. Now, if you have the resurrected power, you have the nature of God. You didn't have a nature of sin. The problem is we have lies of the devil saying that, you know, no, you are like this. You, you have a lot of sin because like that. Your dad is alcoholic. You're going to be alcoholic. You're going to be a children. Your, your kids will be alcoholic. Your dog will be alcoholic. Your bird will be alcoholic. Your, 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 everything that around you will be alcoholic. Because what, that's what we think. It's lies of the devil. But when you say that, no. No way, Jose. I have the resurrection power of God. It breaks loose every sin in my life. Break it in the name of Jesus. No, yes. I, I, I'm not saying that you will not commit sin. You will, but that's not, my, that's not your trademark. That's not part of your DNA. You may taste a little sin like that, but so what? It's not going to affect you much. The renewing of your mind. That's why I start knowing. It start with here. This coconut. This, this, this thing. Amen? This is the one that it messed up. That's why the Bible said, know it by the word of God. Knowing, knowing, knowing. Not knowing intellectually, but going to be experientially inside it, in, in, in your cell, in your tissue, in every part of you. It's about God, the resurrection power of God. Let's see if sin still going to exist there. Are you getting this, church? I'm all sweaty here. I just want to get it. Next, it break loose the chains of sin. Second is that knowing the power of his resurrection destroy the works of the enemy. It destroyed the work of the enemy. The enemy doesn't have hold on you. We amplify the word, but actually he's defeated. He's powerful and it's he defeated that. We are living. We are more than conquering Christ Jesus. Man, you're victorious. The devil is just a little bitty, bitty knot. Knowing the power of resurrection destroy the works of the enemy. 
whatever situation you have right now, whatever things in your past, come to Jesus and say, God, I want to know the power of your resurrection. You remove every sin, any sin, bro, uh, 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 chains of sin, and God, you, you destroy the work of the enemy in my life, and I cut it off just to know the person of Jesus. How are you getting this, church? Woo! Knowing the power of, of his resurrection allows you to walk in triumphant living. It's perpetual victory. I'm not saying that you will not have battles. But I want to tell you that through his resurrected power, you are destined for victory. Wants that? Anybody wants that? God wants you to walk in perpetual victory. Perpetual victory. Progressive victory. Not only today, tomorrow. Nah, uh, no, no. Continuously going up because you are destined for that. Not because of you, but because of Christ inside of you. The hope of glory. The Christ in you. The hope of glory. This. Are you are you are you being encouraged? Do you have a mega vitamin right now to face the enemy, face your situation? Yes, because the Lord Christ is inside of you. The rest of the power is inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Knowing the power of his resurrection allows you to rest. I love this. Allow you to rest on the finished work of Jesus. This is what we call grace. Sometimes it's like we're trying so hard. The battle's been won. You just appropriate what the Lord has done on the cross and do it. You know, yesterday, I said, I'm preaching this about the power of resurrection. And how can I use this in my daily life? So yesterday, so yesterday I'm studying, and then... Um, uh, my administration on call called me. Oh, I have been, a lot of calls I received yesterday because I am a, a manager of a hospital, two hospitals, uh, uh, 200 employees, almost 200 employees. So I'm not on call, but um, there's a, a situation in the, in the hospital that, that I need to attend. There's no staff because I believe it's Easter, they want to go to church. So they're calling in, left and right. Calling in. So we have no people who are going to work. So I, I've been a manager for three years. I never work, uh, and, uh, you know, to come in to work extra, you know, just to do that. But yesterday, it's different. They talk, talk to me in the morning, said, hey, you better, uh, lunchtime, you better come because nobody, it's only four nurses. We need all these nurses. And da, 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 da. Okay. So I said, How, my blood pressure goes up, you know. And then uh, I have a wedding at 10 o'clock p.m. Yes. The first time wedding, I'm dead in 10 o'clock p.m. I did a wedding at 10 o'clock p.m. And they want me to work at night so I, I don't have sleep. And then I have a date with my wife my children. So it's just like all over. And I'm standing. I said, oh, Lord, resurrected power of Jesus, where are you? Where are you? I'm so stressed out. You know, my blood was shooting up. And, and then I need to work and all this. Nobody's... Uh, uh, nurses are getting, bless you, uh, just, so all of this, and I said, and I'm, and then I said, I'm, I'm studying, I need to apply this in my, in, in the word of God, I apply my situation, so I said, knowing the power of his resurrection allows you to rest on the finished work of Christ, why I'm stressing out, I said, if I need to work, work, you know, if I need to do all these things, but I said, I'll, by faith, I will come to the hospital, I prayed, I prayed, and I said, do I need to come or not? So I did pray. I put my, my, my uniform at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I came. I said, okay, let's watch the problem. So I began to settle all the problem. And then suddenly, some people just calling me. Hey, uh, we started calling people, and uh, God gave me wisdom what to do. So we up to uh, something. We did something. And then they kept on calling me. So I got all the stuff that we need that, that day, that I don't need to come to work. And I did the wedding at 10 o'clock, and I, I studied. See, I said, I, want, I just want to rest. I said, I am victorious. Why should I be stressing out? Well, my blood pressure should be normal. I'll be okay. I'm a man of God. 
Can, can you apply in the situation? It, everything went in well. I am just enjoying yesterday. Oh, God, you're so good. <laughs> the thing is, like, can you do this in your situation if you don't have any money? Yes, you can because your source is God. Your provider is God. What if you have turmoil with your relationship with... Hallelujah. He's a preacher boy, huh? It's going to be my a preacher. I put everything on that boy. Amen. That's okay. I love children. That don't bother me. So can you, can you apply that in your life? In your situation? You know, if you don't have any money, He is your provider. If you need peace, He is your peace. Just come to Jesus. Drink on Jesus. And just say, God, give me wisdom. I'm coming to you. Like Mary did, going to Jesus, seeking Jesus. Go to the presence of God. And when you know that, in hope rising up. You know, Bill Johnson said here, sometimes Christians don't have any hope. What is hope? Hope is, is a joyful anticipation of good. It's a joyful anticipation of good. God wants to give you hope today that you have a joyful anticipation of good. The problem here, if your situation is there's no hope, you succumb to the lies of the enemy. When you say, said, ah, this is not hope. My family will never change. Or I will never change. That's saying to your situation, allowing, succumbing the work of the enemy, the lies of the enemy. God want to eradicate that today. He want to give you hope. The resurrection, the tomb was rolled away for you to have hope. <laughs> Come on, he's a good God. The tomb were rolled away for you. Hey Amen. He's a good God. And you know what? To summarize this, everything, what is the rest of that power? It's the love of God. What keep him away, what really make him alive is his love for us. You know, you may be wondering why is there a, let me ask, there's another. Knowing the power of his resurrection allows you to walk in supernatural living. I want to have a supernatural living. Anybody here want to work in a supernatural living that when you pray for sick, they get recovered? You didn't we pray for this. God is God. He can still do miracles. Amen. Don't, don't limit God. Yes, sometimes it will not, uh, you know, oh, I, don't, I, 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 I prayed and nothing happened. So what? Keep on fighting until you get the miracles. God can heal. God can, uh, can transform and change people's lives. He can do miracles. I've seen in my life. I'm a living testimony of that. Amen? Who wants knowing the power of His resurrection allows you to walk in supernatural? I want to, I want to, I am a, a nurse. I am a, a, a teacher. I want, I want to walk in supernatural. You know, it's so okay to walk supernatural in the church. But it's easy. But when you go out there and everything's bickering and doing all this negative, can you still walk in supernatural? But you can if you choose to. Amen? Now, the stone has been rolled away. You know, I'm just wondering, God, why do you need to let the stone roll away? You can really go through and through to the stone. Have you noticed that? That why we... Do you think that God is, you know, cannot do that? He can. He can really go through to the walls. But you know what? He want to say a message that He can roll away the stone in your life. In the Bible, rolled, in the, uh, rolled away the stone, rolled to roll out, is the Greek word is air, A-I-R, air. <laughs> it means elevated. The stone was elevated. There's no big stone that God cannot elevate in your life. There's no big stone that God cannot elevate in your life. He can do it for you. Just stop fighting. Come to Him as you are, and He will change you. You know, here, 
the last slide I have here said it. The same power that raised Jesus, that raised Christ from the dead, is inside of you. Huh, nobody didn't get that. <laughs> the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of you. Say it again. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is inside you, Isaacar. When you're depressed, when everything's leaving you alone, when no money, no job, everything's bankruptcy, you say, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of me. When everything turns dark and everything's all weary and just down, you say, the same power power that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of me. Then the problem is we still on the dark. God already rolled out the stone. Get out. Be resurrected. Amen. You know, last year was the most trying in my life. Um, in the ministry and in my personal and my family. That's, uh, I serve the Lord. I see a lot of great miracles in my life. Powerful works. But one time I received a message. I, 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 my, my daughter is committing suicide. That's the worst a, a, a mom and a dad receive in, in, in the entire life. That you're uh, as if you're a failure. And I said, how can I recover? And I begin to to, to come to Jesus and say, God, you're my resurrected power. You can elevate this situation to me. And that situation, we choose the whole family said, hey, we rally on this. And God made a miracle. Amen. He loves to rescue us. And now my daughter is singing for the Lord. Just people upon people are, you know, hearing their, her testimony that a lot of people are struggling with that and being recovered from that situation. There is hope on Jesus. The problem that we do is that we run away from God. Don't run away from God. Run to God. Oh God, I love you. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is living inside of me. Maybe you're going to need to think about that. Romans 8.11 The same power that raised Christ from the dead is inside of you. You may not feel like it. You may not feel like it. It doesn't matter. It's inside of you. Win. It's inside of you. It's inside of you. It's inside of you. That's the power of resurrection. Now, are you going to be walking in defeat? No, no way, Jose. How can I walk in victory? Because Christ is inside of me. Amen. Can we all stand at this moment?